Today's programming problem is relative ranks, an easy Likert problem that is perfect for beginners, but teaches a useful programming pattern you will see over and over again. So let's get to it. Let's start as usual by reading the problem description. You are given an integer array score of size n, where score i is the score of the i-th athlete in the competition. All scores are guaranteed to be unique. So you're given a bunch of scores as an array, and every score is the score that that particular athlete placed. The athletes are placed based on their scores, where the first place athlete has the highest score, the second place athlete has second highest score, and so on. The placement of each athlete determines their rank. So the first place athlete's rank is gold medal, so this is just the name, gold medal. The second place athlete is silver medal. The third place is bronze medal. And the fourth place to the nth place athlete, their rank is just the placement number. So the first three people get special ranks. Everybody else just gets uh, their number as their rank. So it's going to be four, five, six, seven, eight, etc. So our job is to return an array answer of size n, where answer i is the rank of the i athlete. Let's look at a few examples. In example 1, score is 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So the highest scoring athlete is the first one, so athlete 0. So this person gets gold medal. The second highest scoring athlete has 4 points and is in the 1th index in the array. So this person gets silver medal. Third person gets bronze medal. Fourth person just gets the number 4. So everybody after bronze does not have a special name. They just get the number as a string. Fifth person gets five, again, as a string. So the placements are first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. In the second example, score is 10, 3, 8, 9, and 4. So in this case, the person who scored 10 points would get the gold medal. The person who gets the silver medal is the one who scored nine points. So it's all the way over here, second to last. So this person who scored 3 points actually placed last, his 5th. So his score, his rank is 5. So your output should be gold medal, 5, bronze medal, silver medal, and then 4. How would you approach this problem? I want you to pause the video right now and think about it for a few seconds. You're given the athlete scores, and you need to somehow translate that to their rank. Now, we probably don't have to work with these special strings first. Instead, we can probably figure out their numerical rank first. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then from there, we'll somehow assign them the right next rank. So think about it for a second. OK, are you ready? So one way to do this is simply to go down the array and for each score, try and figure out which place this athlete achieved. And you can figure that out by counting how many numbers are larger than this athlete's score. So for instance, for the first athlete, their score is 10. We're going to go down the rest of the array and count how many numbers they are larger than 10. Well, there's zero number larger than 10, so we know that the person who scored 10, this first athlete at index 0, rank number 1. So we're going to put number 1 here. The second athlete scored 3 points. Now we're going to go down the array once again and see how many numbers there are larger than 3. In this case, there are 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 numbers larger than 3. Athlete at index 1 is placed 5. So we know this person came in last place. And now we keep going. We have the numerical ranks of every athlete in the competition. And from there, we'll have to translate these numerical ranks into their actual ranks. So one will have to become gold medal, two will have to become silver medal, three will become bronze, and everybody else just gets their number. Let's turn that all into code. We start with a for loop that goes through each athlete and their scores. For each athlete, we want to figure out what rank they got. To do this, we go over the whole array again, 
to count how many scores are larger than this athlete scores. The athlete's rank is simply the number of scores larger than their score plus one. Finally, we translate their numerical rank to their actual rank. If their rank is one, two or three, they get a special name, gold, silver or bronze medal. For everybody else, their rank is just what place they're in. We use a results array to keep track of the return values and we fill in the results array as we go down each athlete in their scores. Now let's run our program. Great, you can see all the test cases pass when we sum it. Great, our answer is accepted. But our program runs very slowly. In fact, our program is slower than 95% of all users in Python 3. Why is that? So the reason for this is because we use nested loops here and here, which means the runtime complexity of our algorithm is going to be O n square. If you think about it, it does seem a bit wasteful. We're repeatedly going over the whole array here to figure out an athlete's rank. What if we had sorted the scores instead? Sorting is O n log n, which is less than O n square. And once it's sorted, we won't have to scan the whole array again. Now, if we just sort the arrays directly, that's not gonna help us. Let's say we sorted this second example. We're gonna get 10, 9, 8, 4, 3. Great, we now know the score of 10 wins the gold medal, but which athlete was it? We're forgotten. We need to remember who has which score even as we sort them. Instead of just a score, we construct a list of pairs where the first number is the score and the second number is the index of which athlete got this score. This way, even after we sort our array by score, we still remember which athlete achieved that score. The reason why this works has to do with how pairs are being sorted. So when we sort pairs, we first look at the first number in the pair and then only when there's a tie, do we look at the second number. Um, our question guarantees that all scores are unique. So we're never going to actually look at the index. We're only going to sort by their first number, which is the score. Finally, we're going to use this sorted score plus index array to populate our result. So let's put this into code. So we start by constructing pairs of score plus index. So we use a for loop to do this. We're going to reuse the score array since we don't need it anyway. Be sure to put the score in the, uh, in the front of the pair because that's what we want to sort by. Here, we want to make sure we're sorting with uh, reverse equals to true. So we're sorting, sorting from largest to smallest. Finally, we're ready to populate the result. Once again, we're going to use a results array. We're going to go, to, we're going to iterate through score, which is now pairs of an athlete score plus the, the athlete's index. So note that at this point, we don't care about the actual score of the athlete anymore. We know what place they are. We know what rank they are. That's basically I, the index, uh, because score is going to be sorted. Once again, we're going to use a match statement to transform uh, the, the, the numerical uh, rank into the, the actual rank. Uh, note that the numerical rank is one smaller than it was in our previous program because now i starts from zero instead of starting from one. We're gonna put the result, uh, the, the, the rank into result athlete. So athlete is essentially the, the index of the athlete that achieved the score. And then we can return result. Now let's submit our program. And you can see that this time around, our program beats 90% of all users. We're all the way up here in front because instead, of using nested loops, the slowest thing that we have here is our sort function, which is O n log n instead of n square. So that's it for today's problem. I hope you learned something. And once again, if you enjoy my content, remember like and subscribe.